guys, it's Nate the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we could talk about rulers and squares and rectangles. No, no, re well, there are some rectangles. Um, let's talk about tools that we use for book binding, crafting, paper manipulating, whatever it is that you want to call it. I thought I would go through some of my favorites that I use on a daily basis, talk about essentials, talk about maybe those that are in the middle category, those that would be nice to have, but you can get around without having them. And I will talk about some luxury measuring tools that are on my bucket list. So anyway, let's get started and let's talk about some measuring tools today. Let's begin with essentials. My can of it. Essentials. These are these are the things that you really you really need. The basic bare minimum for book binding for paper crafting, all kinds of crafting really, quilting, all of those different things where measurements are, are pivotal. So let's talk about some of those things. If you have only a couple of things that you can, you can afford at the moment, these are the few things that I suggest. One will be a steel ruler. And the reason why these are great for book binding is because we use very sharp knives when we cut paper or book board and the like. And it's very easy to slice through one of those 50 cent back to school rulers. <laughs> you can gouge little nicks and, and divots out of those in no time flat. So, a steel ruler. These are a little bit more expensive than a plastic ruler, but it's going to last you probably 20 times longer. Another thing that I'm going to say it's an essential is going to be a long, clear grid ruler. And I have a couple of favorites. I have this smaller one, and it is a 15 inch by 3 inch wide ruler and you can you can see through it which is nice and it has these guidelines that are lovely because if you're going to be cutting off of something you can you can square it up by these guidelines and so that makes helps make your cuts a little bit easier the larger one is is wonderful this is the one that Arteza sent me and it is truly one of my favorites these two are the ones I keep at my work table all the time because some things are just going to be too long or wide for this little one, but you don't always need the big, huge one if you're just working on something small or you're just trimming up something small. Maybe this would be a little too unwieldy. So I aim for this smaller one. And this one is from EK Tools and it is just a nice little ruler to have around. But if you can only have one, get the big one. They are also not expensive. It's, they, are, they are not a huge investment, but because they're clear and they have grid lines, both horizontally and vertically, it really will up your game as far as accuracy is concerned and getting things trimmed properly and to the right size with good 90 degree corners and that's helpful when you're making a book. And the other thing is the, the elephant in the room, which is the cutting mat. So you can make a book without a cutting mat. Just be careful what you cut on. If you have an old wooden cutting board, I suppose that would help, that would work too. But these two are not that expensive. This big, huge, massive honking one, and it is three feet by, I think two feet, I think it's two by three feet. On sale, I think I got it for 17 or 18 dollars, so it's not horrifically expensive. You can get horrifically expensive ones. Believe you me, they are out there, and you can drop a hundred bucks on one of these, and they're probably really nice. <laughs> I've just never had one like that. 
I tend to replace these every few months and so there's really no reason to be spending a hundred dollars on one every single time that would be wow that would be wow and there are also interesting things that you can do with the leftovers you know when they're all cut up we'll have to talk about that sometime because I use these Are we done? It never fails. It never fails. It's either the train or the cat. Talking to the geese, I'm assuming. So anyway, I do use the mats uh, after they are retired from my work surface. They get used in other ways. If you have ever broken a, a cutting plate or a shim for your die cut machine, Cut this sucker up. It works great. <laughs> and you can have several. You can have backups because we know how those can get all warpy and crack and all that fun stuff. Okay, so those are my essentials. The cutting mat, some kind of a clear ruler with a grid on it, a steel ruler. So these, these are the essentials. Let's get into things that are nice to have. Not, they don't have to be expensive. They're just nice to have. So maybe this would be after you've decided that, yes, I want to make books or boxes or quilt or really anything that needs to be measured. These next few things would be, would be lovely to have on hand. So at least they are for me. So some type of a measuring square. I do have a couple different kinds. I just grabbed this one because it's nice and red and it's easy to see on camera, really. Um, I have a speed square, which is an aluminum square with little edges where you can, where you can fit it to the edge of the table so it doesn't budge on you. This one will, this one will slide around a little bit more. But what's nice about a square is, uh, well, you can square things with it. And if you want to make a book that is square, that's kind of a nice thing. Because even though your clear ruler has the lines on it and you can line it up, sometimes it's nice to be able to butt something up against a 90 degree angle. If you're checking the square on, on something that you've cut, this is going to be a nice thing to be able just to put up against it, and if it's rocking back and forth, you know it's not square. And then you have to try again. <laughs> Fail, which happens all the time. Okay, um, a level. Again, not expensive. They're just a few bucks. You can get these at any big box or home improvement store. You don't have to have a massive one. This is just a little one, but what's nice about it is it will find level on several different planes no matter how you how you lay it down and it's also magnetic so if you're making a book on the wall you can you can make sure it's a level I know this is for like construction or hanging pictures on walls but a level is nice it's nice to have okay another thing these are this is a set of calipers and this is a digital caliper. And what I like about these is, let's say, let's say you were going to be die cutting something or let's say you needed a material that is one and a half millimeters in thickness. You can get a ruler and you can, you can guesstimate and think, oh, that's about, so that's why I like calipers <laughs> because it just it tur mine turn on right when you roll the wheel here to open up the jaws and then you just place it over whatever you want to measure and then you just roll that wheel until the jaws hold snug whatever you are trying to measure and there is your measurement. So this is 1.19 millimeters or one and a fifth millimeter. 
that's helpful. If you have a, a die cut machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette, something like that, and in the instruction manual it tells you that you need this tip or this blade to be able to cut through something up to one millimeter and then you need that or it's like unless you have something that's going to measure you're kind of guesstimating unless it's labeled so I kind of like them I keep them around these as lovely as they are and as accurate as these are they were not expensive at all I think this one was $25 or $30. So that's a pretty good bang for your buck if you're going to need to know the thickness of things. And it can also, on this side, as you can see on this side, the jaws measure in between something. So let's say you needed to find the space between one, an edge of something and an edge of something else and you needed to know that gap. That's what this is for. This is for measuring the gap. And then this is for measuring the thickness of said item. I love mine. I didn't know how much I needed them until I had them. Do you need them? Do you have to have them? Is it an essential? No. You can get by without them. Would I want to? No. And because they're so inexpensive, it's not like it's a um, a pipe dream where you're, I'm like, I'm never going to afford that. It's not the Bentley. <laughs> um, okay. So those are some essentials, some, that would be nice to have. Maybe I'll get that next. And then let's talk about a few luxury items. So I don't have two of the three I'm going to mention to you right now. So I will pop pictures on the screen. So one of those would be a digital tape measure. <sighs> yeah, everybody wants one. They're not horribly expensive. You can get horribly expensive ones, as with anything. You know, if you forgot your glasses, <laughs> it's hard to read those little teeny tidy lines. I would like to have one, let's just put it that way. It'd be nice to have. That is on my, my luxuries. I don't have to have it, but if I came across a good deal, I'll probably order it. There goes that impulse control again that I, I have trouble with. Okay, and another thing is going to be a corner square. So I would like a corner square just because I think it would help me to make better cuts. But do I have to have it? No. There are even some DIY projects on making corner squares. But if you don't have a good measuring tool to begin with to make sure that what you're cutting out to build your corner square out of is true, then don't bother because <laughs> you'll just build a wonky one because that's what I would do. So I was probably just going to leave it to the professionals. Okay, so one thing I do have um, are, are these. And these are one, two, three blocks or welder's blocks. And these are... These are amazing. Again, another thing I didn't think I needed, but then when I got it, I was like, how did I ever do without that? So one, two, three blocks are exactly that. They are one inch by two inch by three inch. Some of them are solid. Some of them just have a hole in the center. Some of them have these drilled holes all over and some of these holes have been threaded so that you could um, screw a bolt in because they're for welders. That's what they're for. But what I like about these, they're nice and heavy. They're about the weight of a medium-sized book, I would say. Nice and sturdy little, little thing. So they're almost like extra hands to hold things. So like, let's say you have a squ your square here, and let's say you're gonna be making a box or something. And you have your pieces for, for the box, you can place these one, two, three blocks into the corner and hold your material snug in the corner. So you can glue that and then you can walk away. You don't have to stand there for 30 minutes and hold it because ain't nobody got time for that, ever. 
<laughs> there are also uh, tools that you can use that will hold a square for you. So this is kind of just a rudimentary, kind of a corner clamp extra hand holder. But then we also have something like this. And while this is technically not a, a measuring tool, if you don't have a 90 degree angle, when you're building something, then your measurements aren't, nothing's gonna line up. So while it's not technically a ruler or calipers, it's still a precision tool to help true corners. And sometimes that is exactly what you need. This is not very expensive either. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I will pop that on screen because the brain is not clicking in. You can buy very expensive versions of all of these things, but then there are also versions that are for home use and not, not commercial use or construction use. So this corner clamp, I'm gonna tell you, this isn't just an extra hand, this is an extra person holding this for you. It's kind of it's kind of a great thing if you make things with a lot of corners this this it might rock your world if you are the child or spouse of a woodworker you know exactly what this is because they probably have one <laughs> if I come across anything else that I deem worthy as a precision or a measuring tool I will definitely add that to the Amazon favorites list in the link under the video so that you can check it out. And most of the time you will be able to go to your local home improvement store and check it out in person. And the nice people usually at Home Depot or Lowe's, there's usually a display out so you can check it out and see it in person. They might even be cheaper than Amazon, especially if you don't have Amazon Prime and you don't you don't get the free shipping on the Prime items. It's nice because you get to see it in person and you get to visualize better what you could use it for and to see if it's gonna be useful in your life. All these things are useful in my life. I don't use all of these every single day. I do use the essentials and Probably the most expensive thing that I have to show you now, and it is, it does measure, so that's why I think it counts, because it does have a grid on it. So this is my paper trimmer. I know it's a beast. So this is a roto trim, and it is a slide slicer. It's not a guillotine, so it's gonna be a slide trimmer. And this one happens to be the 15 inch model. They come in, I think 12, 15, 18, 20 and 24, maybe not 20. But anyway, this is like the mid range model. And this one just fit on my countertop without making it go sideways. And what I like about the Roto trim is not just that it's a beast, but that it has all these grid lines in here. It does have the little finger guard, so you don't you don't cut your finger don't cut your fingers. These are made in Bedford in the UK, and I tell you what, it was not cheap. It was not even remotely cheap. It wasn't even inexpensive. It was barely affordable. Um, I did not have to sell a firstborn child or take out a loan on the house. I budgeted to get this, but I was tired of purchasing trimmers, just craft trimmers at the store. And even, even some of the craft trimmers that I had were f very expensive for what they were. And they ended up Either the blade would get wonky because the the part that slices the, the material for you, they're just made out of plastic. And so after a while, things will fatigue and the blades end up cattywampus, for lack of a better word. And so they just weren't very accurate. And so it's like you have one job and that's to cut straight. And you can't even do that. So I was frustrated because I would keep buying trimmers 
and then I would be unhappy with them. And I realize that there are companies like Fiskars and that kind of thing that that guarantee your their product and your supposed. But you know what? I don't have time to send a trimmer to Fiskars to get fixed or or whatever to be sent back. And how long is that going to last? How long is that fix going to last? And for a lot of people, they don't need anything more than that. Maybe they have two inexpensive craft store trimmers and. If they have to send one off, they have another one that doesn't get straight. I'm sorry, Fiskars. I'm so sorry. But I got burned too many times. And it wasn't just Fiskars. It was, it was all the craft store variety. The Rota Trim, however, has never done me dirty. I have read that there are people that have had their Rota Trims longer than they had their children. So... I thought that was a pretty good testament. I decided to invest in this one. It was a year and a half ago or so. I have never had to change the blade. They do have a self sharpening feature in them. It cuts through, let me see. I would say that it will easily slice through anything up to a millimeter with absolutely no trouble. If you're going to be slicing anything that is a little heavier than that, it can do it. You just have to go slower. And I'm not talking, you know, metal sheeting. I'm talking chipboard, like lightweight chipboard or mat board, that kind of thing, uh, poster board. It will definitely cut through it. You just have to go slow. If you try to go fast, it will make the material, like let's say, like, like this mat board, it will cut through this. But if you try to go through too fast, it'll grab it and pull it off, off the square and then you'll just end up with a bad cut. So just go really, really, really slow. Now this is bigger than a millimeter. In thickness, just be careful when you're cutting heavier duty things. I can't really put a blanket statement and say what it can and can't go through because some things that are thicker like it might be three millimeters, but it's foam board, so it goes through that. But if it's if it's hardboard or balsa wood, it's not going to cut through that, even though it's the same thickness as like a foam board. So your mileage may vary, and if you're going to be cutting through big heavy things like that, I suggest more of the guillotine style trimmer, which is on my luxuries list. <laughs> Because I don't want just one that you can, you know, chop and then it just kind of smashes your paper off. That's how it cuts. It just kind of, it ham fists everything. I, I, want, I want a sharp board shear. A girl can dream. A girl can dream. So that's on the list with the Bentley. There are lots of commercial level paper trimmers out there. Rota Trim is just one of the better, uh, better brands out there, but there are many, many brands of commercial trimmers. I suggest if you are in the market for a commercial trimmer, um, look at the reviews, make sure that it's going to do what you need it to do as opposed to as opposed to what maybe what I needed to do. I needed precision and I wanted to be able to get a clean precision cut without without muss or fuss. If I cut anything really hefty hefty, I'm using a craft knife and a square or my clear grid ruler, which which works out great too. But if you want to cut paper and you want your paper to be cut evenly, cleanly, with precision, get something that is that is a, a little higher quality and it's going to last you longer. So I'm a firm believer in buying one good thing instead of five mediocre things. Does that make sense? So if you can if you can swing it, I recommend. I recommend a roto trim because it's wonderful. Yeah, this is Rhoda. As far as like a stack of paper, that will also differ as far as how many in a stack you can get you can get cut. If it's if it's like cardstock, of course it's gonna be less um you know, a less number of sheets in, in a in a stack or a pile. 
If it's like copy paper, it's a thinner, like a 20 pound bond, then it's going to be, you can get a few more. But I don't like to trim more than, I'm gonna say five to seven at a time, just because I wanna make sure that they're all nice, clean, even cuts, no matter what it is. I err on the side of caution more than jamming 100 sheets in there and hoping it will slice. I hope you enjoyed my list of essentials. That would be nice to have and then the luxury items. Um, if you have your favorites, put them down in the comment section below and maybe you'll help somebody else who's on the fence about, oh, do I get this or do I get that? Because we all have different needs and we, we might not all be doing the same thing. Um, as far as book binding goes, these are the things that I have because um, they make my job a lot easier. But put your suggestions down in the comment section below and uh, hopefully you can help somebody else that is making some decisions and help them to, to figure out what it is that they need too. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I am gonna get back to work because I'm in the middle of like five things. That's, that's another video. <laughs> that's the ADHD video. We'll get into that too. I hope everybody is having a great afternoon and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.